Town of Lima storage unit destroyed by fire. Sheboygan police investigate armed robbery. UW fraternity loses its charter. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Monday, November 12th, 2018. One person suffered minor injuries after an accident on Sheboygan's north side Sunday evening. Police say a 30-year-old woman was southbound on 25th Street, stopped at the stop sign at North Avenue, and then continued driving into the path of a 42-year-old man westbound on North. The westbound vehicle T-boned the northbound vehicle, and when the male driver tried to stop, mistakenly hit the gas, sending his car up the steps of a home on North Avenue. The female driver was taken to the hospital for shoulder pain and received two tickets. A number of area fire departments responded to a fire that broke out at a storage building in the town of Lima late last night. The Sheriff's Department says they got a 911 call just before midnight about the fire on County W, just north of the village of Adele. When crews arrived, the building was fully engulfed in flames, and crews are still on the scene at this hour, and the fire investigation team has been called in. Sheboygan police are looking for two men that entered a home on North 9th Street, pulled their weapons, and robbed the people living inside. It happened Saturday evening, and police say the men walked into the unlocked home, displayed a firearm, and took off with an undisclosed amount of property. No one was injured, and the police say it appears that the home was specifically targeted. The victim had posted a Facebook photo with a large amount of cash and was known to the suspect by name. Investigators do not believe that there is a threat to the community, and if you have any information, you are asked to call the police. A Beloit man accused in the January 2016 drive-by death of young boy has been sentenced to prison. Rock County Judge Michael Hakeson sentenced 26-year-old Sergio Ortiz Friday to 40 years in prison. According to the criminal complaint, Ortiz and three other men were looking for the rival gang members when they fired shots at a vehicle driven by Austin Ramos Sr. He was not hit, but five-year-old Austin Ramos Jr. was killed. Ortiz pled guilty in July to first-degree reckless homicide, and three other defendants still face charges. Pro prosecutors say that they have been cooperating. The Baraboo School District is investigating claims that a group of students made a racially charged gesture while posing for a group photo last spring. The image was posted to the at Go Baraboo Twitter account, which was protected and has since been erased, showing a group of male students making a Nazi salute. Over the weekend, the image surfaced on national sites and even sparked a response from the Auschwitz Memorial in Poland. School officials emphasized that the picture was not taken on school grounds or at a school event, saying that they are conducting their own investigation into the matter with the help of Baraboo Police Department. If the gesture is what it appears to be, the district will pursue any and all available and appropriate actions, including legal, to address the issue, said Superintendent Dr. Lori Mueller. District officials added that there will be no further comment at this time, and the official Auschwitz Memorial Twitter account released a statement over the weekend saying, it is so hard to find words. This is why every single day we work hard to educate, we need to explain what is the danger of hateful ideology rising. Auschwitz, with its gas chambers, was at the very end of a long process of normalizing and accommodating hatred. The at Go Baraboo was an account that promoted itself as a parody account for the school, and it has since been shut down. The University of Wisconsin-Madison is terminating its Kappa Sigma fraternity chapter. 
The move comes after a television was pushed off the chapter's house balcony and nearly hit a woman this summer. The school issued a statement saying that they issued an interim suspension for a safety-related incident for violating the Student Organization Code of Conduct. UW notified the National Kappa Sigma office, which terminated the group's charter. A video of the TV incident from outside the frat house on 124 Langdon Street went viral last summer. And dozens of Girl Scouts and their families gathered at Columbia Park in Marshfield on Sunday to honor the three girls and a Girl Scout leader killed in Chippewa Falls last weekend. Marshfield area Girl Scouts had held a candlelight vigil along with a prayer. They recited the Girl Scout promise and sang Scout songs. Some of the girls expressed the sadness that they felt when they first heard of the tragic event. Other, together, they decided to organize the vigil, saying it is important to honor someone that was so young and just happened to die as a Girl Scout. Just a, our small little ceremony today, collecting food and winter clothing for soups of, and socks, is our way that we can keep the Girl Scout spirit alive, said Heather Summers, the Marshfield Area Girl Scout Service Area Manager. The Marshfield Fire Department was also at the ceremony. An impaired driver hit the three girls and a mother as they were picking up trash along the highway in Chippewa Falls. Across the nation, troops have been remembering the lives lost in various ceremonies, and there is a GoFundMe page to help the families of the victims. And finally, the start of the gun deer season is quickly approaching. So it's time to make sure your favorite hunting spot is ready to go. State Hunter Education Administrator John King says you should be getting out and inspecting how sturdy your tree stand is. Most of those are tied up with a nylon strap, and that strap from year to year gets torn. It's a bad time to find out your strap is no good when you're halfway up a tree. King says that you want to make sure that your stand can still support you on your hut before you head out on opening day. He also says that if your deer blind has a heater in it, you're going to want to make sure it is working properly and has plenty of space before you turn it on for the season. Through the years, we have had some people suffer injury and even death because of carbon monoxide poison. And then we've also had a few shacks catch on fire and burn to the ground. You also want to make sure that your sling for getting your weapon in and out of the stand is safe and secure as well. Wisconsin's gun deer season runs from November 17th through the 25th. And that's all we have for today. Join me again on Wednesday for another recap of our local news on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.